give you a public service announcement in case of an emergency. Could everyone please exit the chamber using the right or left stairwell to proceed to the ground before and exit the building to allow for emergency personnel to enter? Thank you very much. Also, there's a sign-up sheet at the podium. Anyone wishing to address the council at the public speaking portion of the meeting, if you could please sign up and then we'll call you as we go down the line. Municipal lot next to Monkey Joe's is always full during school hours. 
The city will also be issuing parking permits that will also put more pressure on that lot. The county has proposed to make an entrance into that municipal lot in Broadway. It's not a good idea. That will remove two to three parking spaces to make the entrance. Please not only do that. The traffic and parking study that the county did says that there are 20 to 30 bicycles on Broadway per hour. There is no way this is true, even on a good day. How can anyone justify the removal of parking spaces on a one-day study? With the proposed reduction in size of traffic lanes, fire trucks and other emergency vehicles will not have enough room to pass when there is traffic. For example, in front of my store, the total traffic lane width is 28 feet wide. The proposed width would be 20. When there are parked cars in the parking lane and traffic, there will not be any room for cars to move over so the fire truck can get through. Winter is coming. The snow plow will not be able to clear the bike lane if there are parked cars in the way. So now, business owners will have to clear a path through the bike lane to get to the parked cars so people can come in. Also, garbage pickup will be made more difficult because again, if there's parked cars in the parking lane, the garbage truck will be blocking the traffic lane. Currently, there is enough room for cars to go around. The plan is like Swiss cheese full of holes. 30 businesses and over 820 people have signed this petition to stop the removal of parking on Broadway. Please come and see me at Dallas. I can show you the markings in the road that the surveyors have made. The bicycle lane should be diverted to Prince Street. Thank you for your time. Please do not approve the plan the way it's currently proposed. That's the petition, 820 people. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. you. want to hand that into us, Nick? Or is that copy? Uh, the mayor has copies of most of it. Okay. I'll make more. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Next speaker, please. <coughs> Chris Schrader. Hi. I don't really need the mic. My name is Chris Schrader. I live at 18 Aura Place. I'm calling in regards of the bike trail and everything and the parking. Um, I, as a grandmother, love taking my children on Broadway shopping. Um, if you're going to be having the bike trail there, you're not going to have places to park with children. Us, as a handicap, I am handicapped, to where am I going to park? Are you going to give me extra places to park? The parking lot, yes, is filled during the week with high school kids. Rite Aid, you can't park in there, only if you've got a Rite Aid. The Midtown Center, yes, they are repairing the Midtown Center. There's no place to park there. Even when people go to the program, there's not places at this time to park. What happens later on? We're all going to suffer. Just please, please, we beg you to reroute it and rethink what you're going to hurt a lot of these businesses and their families. You're really going to hurt them. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Kathleen Mielis. Hi, Kathleen Mielis, and our business is Monkey Joe Roasting Company at 478 Broadway. And I want to speak about building a bubble Broadway. When my husband conceived of the idea to open a coffee roasting business 15 years ago, he studied the demographics and the best locations for a year in order to make this adventure work and to limit our risks. Because obviously we were older. We weren't young people. We are young people. Anyway, he chose this location in Midtown Broadway, much to the surprise of those who were eager to see a coffee roasting business. But they were also wondering why we didn't open it uptown or downtown. But they weren't as aware of what makes a coffee business successful. Quick and easy access is a major parameter in our business that is convenience that customers demand. Although our coffee is the best that can be found in the coffee growing world, we don't fool ourselves into thinking that that alone will drive customers to our door. One customer last week asked a friend why she drives by Monkey Joe every day but gets her coffee out of chain. Convenience, they have a drive through Why do people buy curry coffee makers? when there are much better ways to make coffee. Convenience. Quality will be sacrificed for convenience and time constraints. As a business owner, we know what makes our business successful. 
A major reason that we chose this location was its parking convenience for easy access for all the people rushing about around us who desire our coffee every day but have no time to waste. This is not leisure time, it's a work zone. We're different from uptown and <coughs> Placing obstacles in the way, removing access for our loyal customers, are just adding unnecessarily to the already busy mix of cars, foot traffic, emergency vehicles, and creating exactly the wrong environment for our business. Midtown is a work and school area unlike uptown and downtown Kingston. People are hurrying about to and from their homes, catching a quick break on their way by in both directions. Our busiest hours are 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., with major peaks around office, hospital, school break times. Finding an open parking spot is key to those customers. They don't have time to roam around or find a turnaround for this stop. Monkey Joe is already heavily invested in Midtown Kingston, as well as 30 plus other independent businesses. Along this area of Broadway are some of the most successful, long-standing businesses in the city with delivery trucks, some of them 18-wheelers, needing to pull in on either side of the street and having probably the most heavily trafficked area for emergency vehicles. Planners did not think it important to include us, the business owners, or the hospital, or the high school, or emergency providers in this major Broadway change. We have real life experience, not projections based on formulas and minimal <coughs> data. We don't feel they did their homework. We don't feel they really planned. That said, adding two-way bike traffic, hindering access to successful businesses is just not a good change for our business and our location in Kingston. A back street, we feel, would provide a better choice for everyone involved, and if the cyclists choose, they can still use Broadway. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next speaker, please. Gwen Sorensen. Glenn Sorensen from Stone Soup Food Company, right two stores down from Monkey Joe's, and I can only second, triple, quadruple everything Kathy already said. When we have delivery trucks on Mondays, we have two huge trucks that sometimes have to park two blocks away to find enough room to just wheel the food to our store, to our location. Um, I have been in a car accident pulling out of our driveway because there's no room on Broadway as it is. I have five little employees, we're a small store, that have no place to park now because if they come to work one minute past 7.30, the parking lot available to them is filled, overflowed with, with high school students who sit there for the entire day with no access for parking for anybody else. So to remove the parking that we have now on the street is just, it's inconceivable that we would be able to get customers in our store, that we would be able to function on our deliveries. We have lunch deliveries. People know they can't get to our store. So they call for a delivery. We can't even get a car on the street close enough to the door. We have to walk sometimes two blocks with food to get it to our vehicle so we can deliver your lunches. And I would really strongly hope that you reconsider this. It's not in any of the businesses' best interest, which translates to lower revenue and tax money that Kingston has to work with. It's bad all the way around. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker. Jill McGarris. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, Joe McGarris. I know Joe Beats, 456 Broadway. Hello. 456 Broadway. Uh, just to summarize what um, has been said here tonight, um, when this project was first presented, uh, through the Community Development Board, which I'm part of. There was a real, uh, we're looking for a vision to attract more people to Kingston because what we see here 
is beautiful and we see the growth and we see Uptown's doing great, Downtown's doing great. Boy, if we can make a magical, beautiful Broadway <coughs> theater and what we have going on and the brand new high school and it's just a great vision. Um, for us to pull money somewhere out uh, from someone underneath somebody's bed to get this Broadway project done. Taxpayers definitely aren't going to pay for this. We understand that. Uh, so we did need to go get money from someplace else. I understand that money is uh, happening all around the country and around the world to build these greenways and get more cars off the street. And uh, we do understand that. You know, that, make no bones about it. We understand we do want a beautiful Broadway. We do want new sidewalks, we do want new lights, we do want everything that a nice city has. Uh, it's nice that when you know your friends or family come from out of town and the city's looking really good, you can kind of show it off a little bit as opposed to drive someplace else when they come here, you know, to show them, you know, the reservoir or something. Uh, the Walk Kill Valley Rail Trail is a beautiful rail trail. I ride it myself. Uh, I ride rail trails in a lot of different places. I do bike. Uh, when I do bike in this city, I bike from point A to point B. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that way to hop on Broadway to come down, to come, you know, to hop on like a train. I would still cut through the side streets and get to where I'm going. Uh, a bike lane is a bike lane, and a bike trail is a bike trail. What you guys are proposing, or has been proposed, I don't mean to say you guys, because I, I honestly believe that some of you guys don't even know about the proposal until just recently. Um, the actual details of the proposal. I know that some of you guys have been part of the plan, but I know that also some of you haven't even come by to talk to us about what we think of the plan. So a, a bike trail is what has been proposed where it's a super wide thing with two lanes and barriers. Um, most major cities have a bike lane with the cities like Boston where they can't, they can't extend the roads because the roads are so old. Uh, they have shara lanes where there's a little bike drawn there and it's three feet and the people that are riding the bike are smart enough not to get hit by cars and they make it work. Uh, to take away 10 or 13 feet of our section of Broadway is going to hurt our business badly. Um, if anybody here has ever been in the food business, You'll understand that every hour that you're open, um, it's a battle. And if one thing goes wrong, your business is, could go down. 85% of food and restaurant, you know, bar type businesses fail because there are so many different variables from your employees to health standards to pricing to competition. Um, for us to lose parking spaces in that section of Broadway, just one parking space would be uh, bad for everyone. Uh, we do share all the spaces. We have a hair salon, we have a hot dog place, we have pizza, we have soup, we have coffee, we have sandwiches, we have a hospital, we have a high school, we have YMCA, we have Midtown Center, we have doctor's offices, and we have not too many parking spaces. So what I would like to leave as uh, a final note here, if we could get a final product wrapped up and shown to us what the final product looks like before. You know, we just want the opportunity to say, uh, please don't take our parking spaces again if that's what's going to happen. Uh, you know, no matter who we have to talk to about it. An easy solution is what these guys have just said to you. Just, you know, the trail can come up the way it's coming, just divert it around Prince Street and go around this to where the Broadway opens up again. It's really simple. Okay? Thank you. All right, thank you. That concludes the ones that have signed up. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council at this time? Please come up. Give your name and address. Bill Hutton. I own Monkey Joe Roasting Company Building. Uh, my address is 89 Prince Street. Um, there's a few things that else besides the the parking <clears throat> space loss that is uh, significant to me is that I've done some studying of green bike lanes. And if you go to, you do a Google of it, the first two things that come up are advocates for bicycles. 
and one of them is greenlane.org. And within that site, it states that this is inappropriate type of safety for cyclists. It doesn't work. Without a full, solid barrier, keeping the bike lane separated from traffic, which would mean that you're literally blocking off a whole three-foot curb the length of this bike lane. <coughs> Secondly, is that it's not appropriate for a small rural city. It would be appropriate in a large city such as Boston or maybe in Seattle, where we have much more control over uh, snow removal and the ability to use this in a year-round basis. Economically, as everyone has spoken, this is a disaster. Right now, when I have observed on Broadway, it is an average probably of three to 10 cyclists a day. And I'm observing them out my window while I'm working. So I've, I've been up there and I've been looking out. But if we put a camera on, out of the window, you can actually see this and track how much bicycle traffic we have. If we don't get 200 cyclists, you're not going to take, two, it would take 200 cyclists to replace one parking spot because the average of the number of cyclists that stop and buy something in that corridor is one a day of all cyclists right now. So you'd have to multiply them, 100 to replace one parking spot. But more importantly, it's not safe for cyclists. If you read, I will give you or send you um, the uh, web addresses that you can read this yourself, and these are bicycle advocacy groups not against cycling. And I'm not against cycling, I'm a cyclist myself. I've ridden Broadway probably as much as anyone in my lifetime. And uh, I've owned, it, or owned the building in which there's been a bicycle shop for 25 years. Previous to Monkey Joe's, it was the Kingston Cycle Group. And I can tell you that no matter what you do with a bike lane, what it does for cyclists is it gives them a false sense of security. And they don't follow the rules of riding the road. And every, at every intersection, it becomes a more and more of a danger instead of less of a danger. If you take everything that everyone else has said, but if you take safety into consideration first, for cyclists, this is the wrong thing to do. If you want to create a bike pathway or a designated bikeway through the city, that is a good idea. My feeling is it shouldn't be on Broadway. It can come up Jansen Avenue, it can go up Hasbrook Avenue, it can go down Prince Street, it can go up Smith Avenue. If you ride in the city and you want to avoid traffic, that's the route you're going to take anyway. And it's also the safest route because you'll have less traffic to deal with in both directions. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else at this time that would like to address the council? My name is Sean Pimenter. Uh, I own two properties on Broadway. I own 460 Broadway, which is a hair salon, and I own uh, 470 Broadway, which is uh, Stone Soup, which Glenn is occupied. I've lived on Broadway for 15 years, lived, had a store, lived upstairs, and over the time, the, the parking is just, the day you have, in the winter, you have the snow, you can't park on Broadway. I mean, it's great to see that everybody's trying to make the city better, but the only way to make it better is to sit down with the business owners because they are the ones that are driving this, you know, area. This block right here was the best block on Broadway, and it's been like that since Monkey Joe's moved in there. They brought a nice, <coughs> diverse crowd which I'm going to be honest with you, when we moved in there, I said to myself, I'll never make it. And look, this whole time, and he's made that block what it is. And, you know, to take away these parking spots from all these businesses that need it doesn't make sense. We need to sit down and speak to them and try to figure out a way to make it work. There's a lot of stuff that, I don't know, I mean, I've lived here, so I know this. You have all these huge trees that are in front of all these buildings down on uh, this block where Burger King is that block the storefronts, erode the sidewalks. I mean, the sidewalks are coming up. The 
the trees grow into the foundations. It all sounds good, it looks good on paper, until you realize over time what's gonna happen. There's no places if, for all these bike lanes, for these bikes to be locked up. You put up bike locks a few years ago, they're all missing, there's all holes in the sidewalks up and down Broadway. The bricks that were replaced five, six years ago are all eroding, especially up uh, where the hair salon is and in front of Joe B's. I don't know why it's so much worse there than in the middle of the block, maybe because the intersection may plow the snow with the salt. But uh, it's great to see that everybody's trying to make the area better, but you need to speak to the businesses because the businesses are the most important, not these people that are going to be riding these bicycles that don't live in the city, that they don't feed their family off of their business that's in the middle of the city. And most of these people that are making decisions don't live in the city of Kingston. They don't know what goes on on this block. They drive by, up and down. In the morning when I bring my son to school, I live on Hunter Street. It takes me 15 minutes to get from Hunter Street to the end of Broadway. And the traffic is insane. And you're gonna take away more uh, parking spots and add more, you know, during the construction and everything. It's just a bad idea. It needs to be thought about. It needs to be discussed more with the businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the council at this time? Seeing no one else, I now declare public speaking portion of this meeting closed.
and a question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? The resolution is adopted. 8 0. We have a vote on resolution number 204. Resolution number 204 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, appointing members to the Arts Commission. On a question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? The resolution is adopted. 8 0. We now move to resolution number 205. Resolution number 205 of 2015, an ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to traffic on the public streets of the City of Kingston, New York, and One Way Street on West Union Street. On a question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Resolution is adopted. 8 0. We now move to resolution number 206. Resolution number 206 of 2015, the ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to traffic on the public streets of the City of Kingston, New York, alternate traffic signals at the intersection of Wall and Jones Streets. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Resolution is adopted 7 1. We now move on to resolution number 207. Resolution number 207 of 2015, an ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, repealing handicap parking on St. James Street. On the question. There no discussion. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Resolution is adopted. 8 0. We now move to resolution number 208. Resolution number 208 of 2015, an ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, and in handicap parking on Hunter Street. On the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? Resolution is adopted. 8 0. We have a resolution number 209. Resolution number 209 of 2015, an ordinance amending an ordinance in relation to traffic on the public streets of the city of Kingston, New York, and a handicap parking on 3rd Avenue. On the question. Alderman Chatter. Mr. President, um, I'd like to do a little further review on this. I'd like to make a motion to send it back to the council or committee. I mean, Okay, so I have a motion to refer back to what I have a second. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the question. Hearing no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed? The resolution is referred back to the committee. Now we'll move on to resolution number 210.
first of all, I, I support this resolution, and I'm going to be a yes vote. But I just want, I think it's a, a good opportunity to just uh, take a, a, a brief look back at, at how we got here. Um, I think everybody knows, understands the, the benefits of LED street lighting and the energy and electricity it saves and um, the low maintenance and so forth. Uh, but we are at a high figure for the, our, our lights to, uh, to replace them with LED. Um, we started back in June of last year after we spent, we approved and spent $15,000 for a uh, feasibility study. At, at that time, the study came up with numbers that are really quite different from where we ended up. And this is a, from the consultant that went on to uh, uh, bid on and, and win the uh, $105,000 engineering uh, portion. So back in June of 2014, there was a simple payback, which is the, uh, the amount of time it takes to, to recoup the, the money spent, uh, estimated at 3.1 years. And now, with a 2.1, and really it's a 2.2 million, 2.22 million dollar um, bond that we're being asked to approve because rolling in the cost of the consultant on top of all the fixture costs and um, uh, the contingency and so forth, we're at 2.22 million. With that, we're looking at a five, almost a five and a half year payback time return on, on investment. So that shifted considerably. That went from 3.1 to 5.4 years. I don't know what changed in the meantime. I thought that what we were hiring this firm to do was to help us find the most uh, efficient and cost-effective solution to this. Uh, to what we were, we were uh, what our goal was. So when you look. At the cost where we started, we were looking at $350 a fixture. And where we ended up was over $900 a fixture. Other cities have uh, done this, completed it successfully, and have spent considerably less. So <laughs> we're paying a premium for this. And it's going to take longer to pay back. I think. We could have done a better job at studying this, given the time that we've had the last 16 months to get to where we are now, instead of spending, that. and in that time we could have saved, if we had acted more quickly, we could have saved over half a million dollars in uh, electricity costs. So, you know, here we are, and I just feel like we spent the money to do a study and the result was a much more expensive outcome. Uh, hindsight being what it is, I just wish we had had a, a, a process that allowed us to go more directly to the manufacturers and saved uh, the, the taxpayers a lot of money. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? There's no one else. I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Resolution number 213 of 2015, bond ordinance dated October 6, 2015, an ordinance authorizing an additional $2,100,000 bonds of the City of Kingston, Ulster County, New York, to pay costs of a street light replacement project in and for said city. Long roll. Alderman Mills. Yes. Alderman Shadow. Alderman Brown. Yes. Alderman Sesh. Yes. Alderman Will. Yes. Alderman Dawson. Yes. Alderman Carey. Yes. Alderman Davis. Yes. Resolution is adopted 8-0.
14 of 2015, resolution of the Common Council of the City of Kingston, New York, authorizing adopting a bond ordinance in the sum of $3,500,000 for the 
concludes the uh, resolutions for this evening. If I answer a motion to adjourn, is there any anyone who would like to offer up on the last one?